Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create dynamic and easily adjustable photo frames. There are mock-up templates out there, but creating your own definitely gives you more flexibility. Let's start by taking a photo from the stock library. This one came up when I entered room in the search. It's straight on, which is what you're looking for, and it doesn't have any perspective deformation, which is still not available in Affinity Designer. The first step is to cover up the wall and hide the images that are hanging there. I created a rectangle, gave it a Gaussian blur to blend in, and it has a gradient to match the background color because it's not an even color. So I picked the extreme colors on either corner and that way we have enough of coverage to not be visible. I brightened up the scene a little bit with an adjustment layer, a curve where I just pulled out the highlights a little bit so we have a slightly brighter scene. Now that the background is fixed, I lock that one and create the frame. The frame is a rectangle and we want to keep it as a shape to be fully adjustable. I give it a wide color and an outer stroke. Adjust the thickness of the outer stroke and then add a outer shadow to give it the shadow that shows that the frame is off the wall. I duplicate the frame to create the clip that is the container for the image. I use the contour tool to make it smaller. This way it scales dynamically when we adjust the size of the frame. And instead of an outer shadow, it'll have an inner shadow to show that it is slightly lower than the frame itself. To give the frame some depth, I'm adding a highlight on the black frame. So I duplicate the black frame and again using the contour tool scale it up a little bit and take off the fill and give it a white highlight. By adjusting the pressure curve I can adjust the highlight to fade it out in the areas where it wouldn't be seen. I just pull down some notes in the curve to hide the line completely so we just have the highlight in the top left corner. Give it 50% opacity and then rename the layers just to know what I'm working with. So we have the clip, the highlight and the frame and if I move things everything moves accordingly as long as I move all the shapes together. By adjusting the contour I can change the size of the container that will hold the art piece. The one thing you want to look at when working in a photo is the light setup. And I totally ignored that and I put the light on the wrong side so I readjusted the curve for the highlight and the drop shadow and the inner shadow to create the light coming from the top right rather than the top left. With that part fixed I can now adjust the frame as I like. I can duplicate it, give the scene two frames if I want or I can go a little fancier and work on the profile of my frame that is done with the bevel. I added an inner bevel to the frame and gave it a curve to display the grooves. Seeing the bevel works with a light setup, you got to change the direction to match the photo. We have the light in the top right, so the light direction should be coming from the top right here as well. Seeing this setup is very flexible, it's no problem to change the color of the frame or give it a gradient. In this case, I'm adding a little bit of shine to this frame. It still remains fully scalable. Once I select the whole frame, I can adjust the width or the height and everything else scales with it. Let's create another frame type. This time we're gonna take the bevel and simplify it and just give it a rounded edge and darken the frame. To add a texture to the frame, in order to do that I expand the stroke. Now we have two elements, the background and the frame shape. The outer stroke and the bevel need to be adjusted. We need a lot thinner bevel. This curve will be the clip mask for our texture. So let's bring in the texture. I just took a wood pattern and I place it inside. Adjust the opacity and bring out the color of the frame itself. The highlights and shadows of the bevel need to be adjusted a little bit. So I give the multiply a little bit more and a warmer color. 
and add a little bit more shine by adding a 3D effect that gives us a sharper edge. I also move the shadow from the frame rectangle to the layer. That way when we scale the frame and adjust the width of the frame itself, the shadow will still match up. The problem with this setup is the scalability. The wooden frame does not scale properly because it's no longer a stroke but a curve in order to contain the wood texture. So I would have to use the node tool to adjust the width of this one and then scale the two other elements accordingly. The one thing you might want to adjust with a texture frame is the horizontal and vertical alignment because normally you don't have a texture that runs the same direction horizontally and vertically so i just create the vertical elements and rotate the texture in those those parts don't need a bevel the bevel will be taken from the group above i move the vertical shapes inside the frame itself and then rotate the two textures to run vertically rather than horizontally now it's time to place some art inside the frames i imported a photo of one of my old paintings and place it in the scene. I can now select the frame and adjust the height and the width to match up with my photo. The last step is to move the photo inside the clip. So I just go into the layers and move the photo inside and it's nicely framed. I can now go ahead and adjust the color, the size, the profile of the frame as much or as little as I want to. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new today, hit the like button to celebrate your new bit of knowledge. To help you remember everything you've learned even better, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you'd like to see on this channel or on my website in the comments below. And I hope to see you again soon.